Hello, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Joshua Harvey, also known as the East Coast Raver. I'm a video content creator documenting music festivals that I attend, as well as sharing my experiences and reviews with helpful tips for people that want to attend these festivals at future dates. In this video, I will be reviewing Tomorrowland 2023 at Established in 2005 by Manu and Michael Beers, Tomorrowland is one of the most beautiful music festivals in the world. Famous for its fantasy themes and unique feeling of global unity with visitors from every country in the world. Located in the wonderful town of Boom in Belgium, the summer festival sells out in minutes and welcomes more than 400,000 visitors from across two amazing weekends every year. Tomorrowland's motto is live today, love tomorrow, unite forever. Live today stands for living life to the fullest. Love tomorrow is for having respect for oneself, including one's mental and physical health, others, and nature, while unity forever celebrates unity, diversity, equality, and freedom for all. If you haven't picked up your copy of The Rise of Edsendo for this year's Tomorrowland, I highly recommend it. It definitely tells a good story. There's a lot of interesting stuff that they like really added to that played on all the detail of like the stuff that you saw at the festival. Um, so I definitely recommend like picking this up if you want to uh, continue with, you know, the fantasy of Tomorrowland. This festival offers two types of ticket purchases if you're just purchasing solo tickets by themselves. That would either be the Full Madness ticket or the Full Madness Comfort ticket, which is the VIP ticket. This festival does offer camping. If you are doing camping, you will stay at Dreamville, Tomorrowland's premier campsite. This has different tiers that you can pick from when you are picking your camp packages, so you need to be aware of what your price range is because knowing what all the different packages that can be offered does not mean that you're guaranteed that you're going to get that package when you go on during the global journey buy on day. That being said, it took us three hours and three people trying to secure our packages for this year's Tomorrowland. So be prepared to have backup options, have a A, B, C, D, and E plan because Getting into that queue is going to be very hard. Make sure you pre-register and have everything set up so that way you're able to go through during checkout. Make sure you also have a credit card that has enough of a limit that allows you to make international purchases beforehand because you do not want to get your card declined. This is a reason why a lot of the people get sent back in the queue and then packages come up for resale during the Global Journey sale packages because people's cards get declined and then they're not waiting to sell them out. Like if you get kicked out, you're back in rotation, your package might get sold the next time you come back through. So just a heads up on that. On top of the ticket selling at a future date, there is also the food add-ons that you can do for restaurants and for Dreamville. The add-ons for Dreamville include breakfast buffets that you can get for each day of the weekend, as well as breakfast boxes that you can also purchase and have them picked up and delivered to your tent. Like I said, these go on sale at a different date, and I highly recommend that if you aren't going to budget for food every single day, which can get kind of costly because things are done in pearls, which is not equivalent to regular euros or dollar standards, I would suggest trying your hardest to do one of these food options because it will definitely help mitigate your cost. And for the amount that we had every day for breakfast, I felt it was entirely worth it. We ended up going with the spectacular Easy Tent setup. This came with two festival wristbands. Our entire tent provided everything for us from our mattress, our sleeping bags, all of that comfort stuff. This was very much like a Desert Rose setup for EDC Las Vegas. If you've done EDC Las Vegas for Camp EDC, this is kind of what you would expect going into Tomorrowland. Plus this option for easy tents allows you to bring your own tent home with you, which is what I did, which is what you guys can see is this back here is my camping tent. So that was one of the things that made it really worth it to us and price comparison for my first Tomorrowland. I wanted to bring home as much of Tomorrowland as I could. <laughs> and I did. Since we were doing Dreamville, we had our own camping entrance for this festival and we had our own separate camping checkpoints that we had to go through. So each each campsite that you go into, Magnificent Green, Spectacular Easy, the Montegos, or the Mansions, all have 
their own security point you have to go in and out of and you have to tap to go in and out with your wristband to get in and out of each of these sections now going in the every single time you get checked going in the first time they checked our luggage they checked everything on us going in and out of the festival same thing your bag was checked if you did not have a bag then you were given a pat down. You're still given a pat down if you had a bag, they just have to check your bag. You're constantly checked going in and out of this festival to make sure that you're like approved to be in like the right areas, which made me feel even more secure. I really enjoyed the fact that I actively saw security walking around patrolling the campsites and like, you know, just kind of keeping an eye on things. I will say they were very thorough going in. I want to say they a little bit better of a job than when I went to EDC Las Vegas. They at least opened up my luggage and kind of like actually poked around a little bit. The only thing I got taken away was a glass of Nutella, which in Europe, everything in is sold in glass jars and they don't allow glass into this festival. So that was a little eh, on our part. I was a little sad to part with my Nutella, but it is what it is. As far as the camping entrance to the actual festival goes, same thing for that one. I didn't have any hard times getting through either of the days. I will say one of the things I did notice, I brought my lunch boxes with me. I had my snack pack with me because I guess lunch boxes aren't really sold in overseas too much. Slash so people don't really use their products over there. They didn't really check the bottom of my bag either days. They were really only concerned about the top half, but I was able to sneak in liquor literally every single day because of this. And y'all can use that information once you will. But yeah, I had no issues getting stuff in. I took in literally like four or five cans of beer every single morning with me when we walked through. Like I said, they were only concerned with opening the top half of my bag. That being said, security on the first day was the longest. Day two and three was like super easy to get in and out. It was less than 10 minutes. Day one was like probably the longest, about like 20 minutes was, was the wait to get in, but that was to be expected, it's day one. I saw way more fanny packs than I did hydration bladders. And going inside the festival each day, you do go through metal detectors. I also got a pat down one day going through and then not the other day. There really wasn't consistency too much with it. It was usually a metal detector or a wand and then either a pat down or just a bag search. So I know that I heard some stories about people getting like turned away at the door for things or things being confiscated that weren't on acceptable items lists. So just be aware of like what you're bringing into the festival. Also your surroundings if you are bringing other things into the festival because there are signs all over the place that they do not tolerate drugs whatsoever. Um, and I did hear rumors that people were kicked out left and right for doing said substances in the open. So just be aware of your surroundings. So one of the most important amenities that Tomorrowland has to offer is going to be your pearl top-up stations. These are areas that you can refill with pearls on your bracelets so that way you can buy foods, drinks, and other merchandise within the festival. They also had things like phone charging stations as well as free deodorant when you use the restrooms. Yes, that is a thing. At any of the restrooms, there usually is an attendant that will service the restroom like sink area and that's usually where you'll find someone like offering up like free um spray deodorant it's not stick deodorant it is spray deodorant when someone told me about it i was like y'all are sharing deodorant sticks like like what but no they have like men's and women's body deodorant spray for you to use there is a tomorrowland merch boutique inside the festival it is right behind the main stage in kind of like near the food court ish area in between atmosphere and the main stage it's off to like the right hand side when you go into the festival i'm pretty sure they keep the the setup generally the same each year so and that was also the area that was like near the art gallery that had like all of the exhibit art that you could go see that they drew up or the concept art that they drew up for the festival in more detail there was also things like a vape store on site if you are a smoker like i said in my other tomorrowland video uh for Dreamville. They really try to mitigate smoking cigarettes in this festival as much as possible. Not that they ban people from broken smoking cigarettes, but I saw way more people smoking vapes than I did people smoking actual cigarettes in this festival. One of the more interesting things that, they, that Tomorrowland has to offer in terms of amenities 
is definitely going to be the tattoo shop. Yes, you heard that correct. You can make a reservation, go sit down and get your very own Tomorrowland tattoo concept art put on your body. I am not one to partake in something like that at a festival. It's an open wound. I don't want to take any risk of it getting infected or someone bumping into it, scraping it, touching it, whatever. But I had a couple friends that did this and there were some varying results. One of them looked really good, one of them looked not so good afterwards. And for the price they paid for it, I felt like it was a little bit pricey, but it was also inside of a music festival. So, you know, they're gonna charge a little bit more for that anyways, because why not, it's a music festival. The only thing that sucks about that is like, you're generally traveling to this location. So you're not generally gonna be able to meet back up with this same artist to do touch-ups, or have anything redone unless you plan on going next year and hope that that artist is there and will do it. But they don't really tell you which artists are actually gonna be at this studio. I had no prior information about this for that and I felt like it was just not really worth it to me like to put something that permanent on my body, but to each their own. Now I'm gonna talk about food. My food experiences at Tomorrowland were great. And if you had any different experiences with food or you had something different, could you please drop a comment down below in the comment section for me, please? I'm really interested to see what other people tried at this festival. There was plenty of options for people to choose from, whether you wanted something savory, something sweet, to if you wanted something more light and you know just not as greasy or heavy. They didn't have as many of like the standard things I would see at like typical American raves, like corn dogs or hot dogs, burgers and stuff like that. They had burgers and french fries in a couple spots, but I don't think I saw like chicken tenders and that was more like culturally diverse food items, just a variety of like everything. One of the items I got was the Tomorrowland burger, uh, which was a vegan option. I did this mostly because I don't generally eat a whole lot of like fried products when I'm um, at festivals, just to try to like keep in like line with my diet. I actively try to incorporate as much fiber as I can into my diet from whole foods. So going with the vegan options, um, knowing that they are plant-based, I was totally for this being that there was also not as much vegetables that you could get at most places to eat at each day. I think like I had a good amount of like fruit at breakfast, but like I didn't have too many other vegetable options throughout the day and salads were just kind of costly to eat. So I didn't really eat salads. The picture I took of this burger was a little lackluster, but let me tell you the flavor was not lacking. I would definitely would have gone back for a second one if I had the chance. Another food item that I tried at Tomorrowland was their dumpling sampler. This was a two shrimp, two chicken, two beef dumpling sampler that came with crushed peanuts, two types of dipping sauces, one traditional sweet and sour, and the other was a teriyaki sauce. Honestly, this was a perfect little snack. I got this before I went into the freedom stage one night. I wanna say this was before Eric Prids, and it really just kind of like held me over before we went back um, to camp and finished eating food there. Another item that I absolutely loved that Tomorrowland had, cause I love croquetas, um, they had a stand called Balls of Glory that are filled with different food options. Um, so they had a pork filled one and I want to say they had chicken and and then they also had like a vegetarian option or like and I want to say a cheese option as well. So they had like a couple different options for you to choose from of what you wanted it filled with and then you had your option of like what did you want the ball to come on. So I got mine on a bed of spiced mashed potatoes and to be honest it was so filling like this croqueta was massive like for what they gave you and the amount that was in there like so good. It was so unique and flavorful describing the food does not even compare to like how it tastes just know that like anything that you get here is going to taste phenomenal like they take extra pride and care into like every detail that they put into this festival and that really shows on every level on sunday we had reservations for the brasa barbecue experience which me and my boyfriend did solo from our rave group this was an add-on that you had to do at a future date after the regular ticket sale went on but before the festival actually started we had to pick these reservations for the times and thankfully we did a little bit earlier in the day so that way it didn't interfere with any of our set times that we wanted to go see 
uh, once the sets were actually released. Also, we were really grateful that we went earlier in the day because Sunday, as you all know, was completely rained out for most of the time until like later in the night. So it was nice to actually enjoy Sunday and the moments where it wasn't raining and have this nice sit down dinner experience. This experience was top notch. Like I've been to some nice restaurants. We ate some really nice places throughout Europe when we were traveling. This was equally as great. Everything from the service to the atmosphere where we were sitting was perfectly curated. The Brasa experience was actually next to the Rise stage, which was nice because you also got to listen to music from the DJ that was playing there and you didn't actually feel like you were segregated and like away from everything that was going on with the festival. For this experience, we opted for the more elevated experience. So this got us an extra dish and we added drinks on from their drink menu as well. For this meal, we got complimentary drinks to start and it was a gin and ginger with uh, fresh cranberries, which was actually very flavorful and quite refreshing because it was a little hot at the beginning of Sunday. Our first appetizer was a beef tartare on a lime wedge with a slice of anchovy on a bed of coarse salt. This also came with a shot of tequila. We were instructed on how to actually consume this um, appetizer to start. You eat the tartare, you do the shot, you squeeze the lime. Basically, like any tequila shot, the limes all last. It was actually really good, um, very interesting. This would, it would be like the second tartare that I've had in Europe and I quite liked the flavor and profile of this one. Uh, I was not expecting to eat anchovies. <laughs> at like two o'clock in the afternoon, but <laughs> one in Rome. We were supposed to have a hummus platter with this as well, but that for some reason did not come out. And that is the only negative aspect of this dining experience is that I can say that we had was that we didn't receive this portion of our meal. The next set of entrees that we got was a chicken pulled pork tacos and quite standard for a chicken pulled pork. Anything, it, it hit every quality of what I like in a taco. It wasn't overly stuffed. It had nice flavor profiles. The chicken wasn't dry. The barbecue sauce wasn't overpowering or anything. It had a lot of nice, fresh, complimentary ingredients that just really made it nice and flavorful. It was at this point in the meal that we decided that we wanted to order glasses of wine off of their extra wine menu that they had to offer. We decided to go with one red wine and one white wine. And this is what we were served for the main meal. took about 45 minutes to an hour to actually complete from the time we were set down. And I would say that this experience was definitely a highlight of my weekend at Tomorrowland, being that not everyone gets to experience these types of restaurants. You guys saw, like that was a lot of food. That cabbage was delicious. Those potatoes, oh my God, I could eat so many of those potatoes. That sea bass was so fresh. The green herb sauce that they had on there was to die for and that prime rib roast and the wine like just everything all paired together was the perfect atmosphere like if you're on a date with someone at tomorrowland it's your honeymoon whatever little occasion that you're celebrating definitely try to book one of these experiences because it definitely does enhance the experience of going to tomorrowland as opposed to just doing like the regular like food court experiences. You get to see kind of like what the menu is before you go. So it's not entirely like a blind menu for these ones. And based off of what was to offered for the Brasa is why we chose this one versus the, the Mesa, which is the restaurant that overlooks the main stage at Tomorrowland. That was just personal preference on our part. Both were about the same in price and both had wine menu option add-ons. Um, so it was just, Really what you really wanted to go for for dining options is what you could choose for for this experience. But I left feeling full, satisfied, and I honestly, I wanted to go back for more. Those cake pops at the end were like, Tomorrowland, you have some damn good food. Like some damn good food. Oh, I also tried pasta, like this pasta bolognese, um, that thing that my boyfriend got Friday. He brought it to the pit for me to eat um, during the calcium back-to-back -back lays. That was also amazing. But yeah, I didn't really try too many other foods. Um, if you tried something at Tomorrowland and you thought it was amazing, please drop a comment down below for me. Tomorrowland has the most stages of any festival. There's 14 in total. 
and there's literally every genre of EDM played across every stage of this festival. The main stage is typically the only stage that usually gets an update each year and it's basically dependent on the theme for each year of what that stage will be. So for 2023 at Sendo, the stage is the city of Arcadiana. I went to almost every stage at this festival with the exception of the Cage, Rise, Terrasoli, the Rave Cave, and elixir i briefly walked past past elixir and like don't get me wrong like i walked past all of these stages the djs i wanted to see were not playing at those stages so i didn't opt to even try to go in there because the way my schedule was lined up for this festival it just it didn't correlate so i just didn't really spend time there I did, however, spend a lot of time at the Freedom Stage, the Main Stage, Atmosphere, Euphoria, and the Rose Garden was my primary ones that I, I, I was at for most of the time I was in Tomorrowland. All of those are like pretty much like Main Stage like size setups. Uh, honestly, like I had great sound quality everywhere. There was not too much issues i would say main stage obviously is going to be the most packed freedom stage was really packed for eric prids thought it would have been more packed for armin van buren but it really wasn't boris breha same thing really wasn't too packed i was able to like still have enough room to like dance and be comfortable as opposed to like friday night for eric prids when we were like sardined in there and it was just like you you were not moving everyone was just like we're here we're watching cool and then 45 minutes in, everyone was like, oh, that's all you're doing? All right, and then left. Getting to and from the stages I thought was very nice was there is one-way paths, which you really do have to pay attention to. The flow of traffic is just directed really nicely at Tomorrowland, but I never really felt any bottlenecks, I would say, other than, you know, just stages being crowded. It's to be expected, like it's such a huge festival. If you don't mind being towards the back and you don't want to be super up front, like there's always those options, especially at main stage. You could be up on the hill towards the back, have like a great view of everything going on around you. None of that de um, deters from any quality of like the festival itself. So don't think just because you're not like right up front that you're not going to have a great time. All right, let's talk about the crowd vibes because this was a hot topic the entire time I was there. Honestly, I I don't want to spend too much time on this one because I'm realizing looking back on it, like there's a lot of factors that go into like why I had some of the issues that I had with some of the people at this festival. But my overall opinion of the crowd is I do not care for the crowd of this festival. That is the only like negative thing I really had to say about Tomorrowland in general. I had just one too many run-ins with rude people. I saw too many run-ins with rude people and just how people were behaving towards one another. And I don't really feel like that aligns with Tomorrowland's like core values. And I just find that really disheartening to just see a lot of people behaving like that towards other people. At one point on, I wanna say it was Friday, no, Saturday, I was leaving the Freedom Stage. A girl ran full force into me, spilt my beer all over me, knocked me to the ground, knocked my phone out of my hand, you know, didn't even bother to help me up, took off, like running. That happened, and then like right after that, like Saturday, I was at the Euphoria Stage for Sullivan King. I had my Forbidden Kingdom page. At one point I was holding it up, similar to how people hold up these flags. Um, you see it all the time in the videos at Tomorrowland. They're always like holding them up. So at one point, before, like as Sullivan King was coming on, like I held up my Forbidden Kingdom page. This was the last time I saw Sullivan King was at Forbidden Kingdom. So this guy came up from behind, snatched my freaking page, pulled it down, got in my face and was like you need to fucking move get that shit out of the fucking way and i was like i instantly grabbed my stuff and i was like excuse you i was like don't you ever put your hands on someone else like that ever again like i could just i, I could not believe it that someone had the audacity to think that they could touch someone at a festival like this hearing stories from other people about things that happened to them 
as well. Like people were saying that they had beers poured on them. One girl I talked to said that they had a cigarette put out on her outfit when she wasn't looking. People were ripping things off of her outfit when she wasn't looking. So there's just a lot of rudeness at this festival. I don't understand why. To be honest, I think by like Sunday, I had just had it and I was like, very in my mindset of like to the stages that we need to go to and i just want to be like i just want to be there and like left alone and honestly sunday i didn't have that many terrible experiences with the crowd mostly because the rain kept everyone away blessing yeah i i feel like one of the main issues with this festival and what contributed to this factor of some of these things happening was the fact that there are so many language barriers between people and cultural differences between people that like are coming to this place to like let their selves be free and you know carefree ish and have those moments of just like whatever but they'll be disrespecting each other now we're here to be causing drama or you know ruining each other's nights or outfits or just you know hurting someone um so i just i don't understand that point maybe it was just my experience and a few of these other experiences that i saw with other people but that just seems to be more of a regular we're going to do a breakdown analysis of how much it actually cost for me to go to tomorrowland 2023. since i did not do the full global journey package from america to dreamville i paid a little bit more for my ticket initially so our flights for two people there and back cost us $3,200. Price of our Tomorrowland Spectacular Easy Tent setup cost us 2,200 euros. Did a 24 pack cold beer pickup upon checking into Dreamville, which cost us 29 euros. The breakfast buffet add-ons cost 2,250 each person each day that you do these. And we did two of those per person. We also did a Brasa reservation dinner, which was $79 per person. For a grand total of a little less than six grand is what it cost us to actually go to Tomorrowland with all of our add-ons and our flight packages included. This also does not count that I spent more money on hotels and all the other traveling I did the week prior before Tomorrowland actually happened. So if you're adding to the total cost of your trip and you're doing traveling beforehand, that could, you know, increase the cost value of what you could actually spend on this trip. Thankfully, I think the way we budgeted everything by paying for things in advance and having credit cards to put things on really helped us, you know, mitigate having to pay a lot of things up front this summer. So I definitely think it's smart to budget and plan for things as much as possible. And like I said, to have an A, B, C, D, and E option in case you do not get your first picks when you're in the queue to purchase your Tomorrowland tickets. I'm gonna start off with cons first, just to kind of get like the little negativity out of the way. I don't wanna end this video on a negative note. So I'm definitely gonna say one of the cons for Tomorrowland in general as a whole is that this festival is expensive. It cost me a little under six grand for me and my boyfriend to go. And we did not the most expensive tiers either. We did do more elevated camping experiences for our tickets when we stayed in Dreamville, but we also did traveling throughout Europe the week before because it felt more right for us to want to like have a proper vacation while we were over here instead of just flying in for the festival and then leaving. It's also my first time in Europe, so I wanted to take full advantage of that. So yes, I did initially spend way more money than the six grand that was just account accounted for for Tomorrowland. I'm not going to talk about how much I actually spent on that entire vacation or in this video. I'm actually going to be coming out with a video roughly the beginning of next year um, talking about like this trip as a whole and my experiences traveling Europe. So make sure you like and subscribe to my channel and ring that bell notification so you get subscribed when new videos go live on my channel. Second con I'd have to say of Tomorrowland is definitely going to be the crowd and I hate to burst your bubble on that but like yeah, I just didn't have the best crowd experience on that. Talking to other people that went to this festival, people that I was also with that had these same experiences can also account for this, but like, 
it is very slim pickings. And like I said in my prior section, a lot of this has to do with language barriers, cultural differences, and that's not to say to like this should deter you from going, but just be a little bit more on the cautious side. Not to say everyone at this festival is rude. I don't want to give that negative credit. The third con that I'm going to say about Tomorrowland is definitely going to be the crowd sizes, um, how packed the stages can get. Definitely makes it harder to like really enjoy yourself, not to enjoy the music, but like to enjoy your surroundings when you're packed in like sardines. Like I definitely did not enjoy how packed it was during Eric Prids, the first like 30-ish, 40-ish minutes of his set. But once it like evened out, like it wasn't terrible. But the same thing at like main stage, like I went into the pit, the center part for beginning half the day when no one was there. But any of the other times I was like, I'm not gonna go crowd surf through that sea of people. Like, no, there's just a lot of people, a lot of people at this festival. So if you're someone who gets crowd anxiety or you know, you just can't be around that many people for any reason, I don't think this is gonna be a festival for you because there's not many places you're gonna be able to really get away from. You're, you're constantly around someone. So just be aware of that. All right, so now I'm gonna talk about pros. I had a great experience and I don't think this, experience is going to matter on the type of experience you have depending if you did the VIP or the general admission. Yes, the VIP has a little bit more elevated stuff for you to enjoy and other perks, but as someone who already is spending a lot just to get to this festival, the extra amount on that did not make a difference for me. Um, I still had enjoyed everything that I did there and I would do it not every year, but I would definitely do it again. I think it's a once in a lifetime, like you definitely should go experience Tomorrowland just to see what all the magic is about. You won't regret it. The second pro that I'm going to talk about is definitely gonna be the production. The production value is top tier. I don't think I had any issues with anything. Um, everything seemed to be up and running and working during weekend two when we were there. And yeah, like I, I felt like the main stage from all the pyro, from the people coming out and how theatrical it was, like I've never seen such an immersive festival like that. Like even down to like the workers, like and like certain area, like a lot of the areas, like moving to around the festival, you'll see like they're all in character friendly. Like the staff is just immaculate. I never really encountered a single rude staff member. So I just want to give them credit for that because they do really put a lot of time and effort into this festival. The third pro about this festival, I'm definitely gonna say, is going to be Dreamville. I had a great time staying there. It is, if you've ever been to Camp EDC in Las Vegas, it is pretty much the same thing, but it is a little bit more segregated on how they like have the area set up. So it definitely does give that illusion of more like segregation in my opinion, but for safety reasons and for like the amount of money that you are paying for these festivals, the privacy and accountability to each area is very nice. I loved the private security that was roaming around and the fact that they, you know, actually like are doing their jobs made me feel a lot more safer at this festival. The fourth pro I'm gonna say about Tomorrowland is definitely going to be their food. Their food is top tier guys. Like I have never seen or had food like this at any festival that I've been to. And I've been to a lot of festivals in America and it's just always the same thing. You get chicken fingers, french fries, burgers. Sometimes you'll get gyros and falafels. And, but like I live in Florida, so like all that stuff is like very culturally diverse here too. It's just different. You can tell that they actually like had like chefs prepare these menus and curates a lot of these foods because like you're you'll never see plant-based burgers at an american festival and not sold at like a good price either if they do sell them they're going to be super expensive and probably small and not really worth the price everything i ate in tomorrowland it lasted me until like i was hungry again in the next couple hours after dancing or i went back to my tent in dreamville and i ate the food there never had any issues with the food and i highly recommend just 
walking around any of the food courts areas and like really seeing what they have there because there's so much that they offer. Thank you for watching this video. If you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. Every like I really appreciate and so do all my new subscribers. Thank you to everyone that is already currently subscribed to my channel. My next set of videos that are coming out are gonna be my EDC Orlando videos and I hope you guys ring that bell notification so you guys get notified when those videos go live on my channel. Until next time guys, bye.